Ms. Brown, <coughs> uh, I would like to address my first uh, questions to you. Would you say, Ms. Brown, that this regulation is more in accordance with uh, strict scrutiny or intermediate scrutiny? Um, I would say it's an unrecognizable standard. Contrary to Ms. Papez's uh, testimony this morning, there is no case in the country that is held that an individual federal agency administering a government-wide program has to make findings of its own to begin with, much less an admission that it, it has discriminated in the past. So it is that whether you're talking about a race-based affirmative action program or a gender-based affirmative action program, that just comes out of nowhere. Basically, you are stating that the representation made by DOJ this morning uh, is incorrect. Absolutely. It is not recognizable as intermediate scrutiny. It's not even recognizable as strict scrutiny. Has the Supreme Court ruled that strict scrutiny should be applied in a situation compatible to this? Uh, no, the Supreme Court is very clear that, that heightened scrutiny is the standard for gender-based scrutiny. We are a women's rights organization. We like to see government measures that, dis that dis differentiate on the basis of gender scrutinized very carefully. Um, the Supreme Court has adopted the heightened scrutiny standard for that. It has spelled it out in different ways, but the substantial relation to an important governmental objective is the standard, and this program clearly meets that. How would you... Um respond to Ms. Popes' testimony that the agencies must show past discrimination to meet the intermediate standard? Well, I think that Ms. Popes was uh, skating on, on two different lines with all due respect. Um, first of all, when she said that, that court decisions require the government and then she inserted here the agency mm -hmm. to show past discrimination, what she's ignoring and what that analysis ignores, not to personalize it, is that Congress, Congress speaks for the government here. Congress has had testimony before it for years about discrimination against women-owned businesses. And as I mentioned, some of that is, is detailed in my, t in my written testimony. Congress made the decision that there is uh, a governmental objective here, and that is what would be tested, not an individual agency's finding. And then she goes beyond that. Uh, most of her remarks uh, focused on agencies having to show there's discrimination, discrimination in the industry. Well, that's exactly what the disparity study did. That was an important part of... Uh, that was an important, uh, very useful thing that was built into the statute to require a disparity study. So you know that your remedies are focused on the industries where you have a proven disparity. Yes. But, but there's no, but she goes even beyond that to say you, you also need an admission of discrimination by the agency. And the Supreme Court is actually, in the Croson decision itself, said, no, you don't. <laughs> Are you familiar with the case cited in the regulation Engineering Contractors Association of South Florida versus Metropolitan Dade County? Yes, I am. Do you think that this case justifies the SBA's requirement of individual agency determinations of discrimination? Uh, absolutely not. And again, I would say on two levels. First, um, let's take that. That's a case where a county has an affirmative action program for women owned business enterprises. Nothing, if the equivalent to the federal government on the county level would be, excuse me, the equivalent to an agency by agency finding would be if the court had said, where's the Department of Buildings? Where's the school construction authority? Where's the hospital, the health department that lets construction dollars? They never suggested for a moment that each agency of that county would have to show discrimination. Never for a moment. And that is the, that's where, um, where the Department of Justice analysis would lead us. But besides that, the reason that the, um, that the women-owned business uh, provision was struck down in that case was that the disparity studies didn't show sufficient disparity. Well, that's no problem. We're talking about a program here that is targeted only, that can only be used if you already have disparity, uh, a disparity finding for the industry. So it wasn't that disparity findings were not enough. My testimony mentions multiple cases where courts, including the Supreme Court, have said disparity is prima facie evidence of discrimination. It was that in that case, the disparity study showed results all over the place, up, down, all around. And the district court said that's not, 
That doesn't convince me, and the Court of Appeals said, I can't say you're clearly wrong. Thank you, Ms. Brown.